The chapter today is the Festival of Lights. Over the temple and housetops of Jerusalem, over its smoking altar and its Mount Zion, a red winter sun was slowly sinking, much too slowly. It seemed to the two children who were watching it that December afternoon from the palace of their grandfather, the high priest Hyrcanus. Hyrcanus. Miriam, a very beautiful little girl of eight or twelve, stood quietly leaning against the window frame. Her long lashes and heavy dark curls turned to a red bronze in the sunlight. <clears throat> Aristotelus, was a, who was nine and most impatient than his sister, kept turning in his hands a small unlighted torch and wondering aloud if tomorrow was never going to come. Half an hour or more, the two royal children had been watching and waiting for the sun to disappear behind the dark edge of the city wall and let the new day begin. For each new day began, not at midnight, but at sundown in Jerusalem. And tomorrow was a festival, the beginning of Hanukkah. Always in December, while the Romans were celebrating the Saturnalia, the Hanukkah, or Festival of Lights, was being celebrated by the Jews. At sundown, as soon as it was dusk, the first one of the eight lamps would be lighted in the Hanukkah uh, lampstand. That was what Aristobulus was waiting for. The next evening, they would light two lamps instead of one. The next, three, and so on, until the last day, all the eight branches of the Hanukkah lampstand would be ablaze with lights. Lights would be shining out from all the houses in Jerusalem. The sacred gold lampstand in the temple had only seven branches, like the seven days of the week or the seven planets in the sky. But the Hanukkah lampstand had eight lights in memory of the miracle. According to a legend which Miriam and Aristotle Blutus, excuse me, that name's weird, never tired of hearing repeated, a miracle had taken place in the temple in the day of one of the early ancestors, Judas Maccabeus. It had been on December day, about 100 years ago, when the Greeks, instead of the Romans, had ruled over Palestine. The temple, after being long misused by the Greeks for the worship of one of their many gods, had just been won back again by the Jews and was about to be rededicated to Javan, the one and only God of Israel. Everything was ready. The altar had been cleansed and purified. New golden basins had been provided to catch the blood of the lambs waiting to be sacrificed. The twelve loaves of unleavened bread had been laid on the table in the holy place, and there too, once more, standing like the tree of life, was a great sacred lamp or candlestick with its seven branches. It had only to be filled and lighted. Then, to the dismay of the priest, no pure lamp oil could be found. A frantic search unearthed but one small dusty jar containing only enough sacred oil to last a single day, but with it the seven cups were filled and lighted. The next day, to the amazement of the priest, it was still burning, and the next. For eight days, it was said, the oil continued to burn. In joy, then, and thanksgiving, Judas Maccabeus had decreed that every year for eight days the miracle should be commemorated with a solemn festival of joy and thanksgiving. For eight days, therefore, this year, as every year, while the Hanukkah lights were burning, the temple walls would resound with singing of psalms and the choirs of hallelujah or praise to Javan, the God of Israel. Judas Maccabeus was the great hero who had been defeated, who had defeated the Greeks and won back the temple. He was an ancestor in whom the two royal children felt great pride, though just how they were related to him, um, Aristobulus never could remember. He knew only that they too were Maccabeans, and that since the day of Judas Maccabeus, all the high priests had belonged to the Maccabean family. Judas Maccabeus Miriam explained to him again, had four brothers. One of them was the great-great-grandfather of our grandfather, Hyrcanus. And all those grandfathers had been high priests. 
said Aristobulus. Some day, do you think there might be another high priest strong enough to fight and drive the Romans out the same way Judas Maccabeus drove away the Greeks? Judas Maccabeus, he said thoughtfully, I can spell that name. Diverted for a moment from his vigil, the boy laid down the small torch and slowly traced the name of the brave ancestor in Hebrew characters on the dusty windowsill. Then he looked up and saw that suddenly, while he wasn't watching, the sun had dropped below the western horizon, and it was tomorrow. It was Hanukkah, the first day of the Festival of Lights. And that concludes that little chapter.